Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Nancy. That was fantastic. Um, thank you also, Lisa, the ACAW team. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here today. In 2015, uh, I curated an exhibition of Lebanese artist Salah Rauda Shukir titled The Meaning of One, The Meaning of the Multiple at Mataf Arab Museum of Modern Art in Doha, where I am curator. During this research, which involved visiting the artist's apartment and studio in Beirut, I learned how she led a practice, a life practice of 100 years, primarily based in Beirut, that was committed to creating thought patterns and objects as tools to read and organize a world composed of plural, malleable entities. I began to understand Shakir as a futuristic thinker who preempted contemporary artistic practices in which interdisciplinary thinking, the object and the body are inextricably linked to technology and ergonomic concerns of our place in the world. Most inspiring was her articulation of the role and power of the body politic working hand in hand with art, aesthetics, and architecture to shape our understanding of the changing world in the context of transcontinental shifts towards modernity. This perspective was studded with the vicarious foresight of a scientifically, digitally maxed network's future. And from these uh, acknowledgements, I initiated my PhD studies on the artists that are now underway with the Bauhaus Weimar University in Germany. And I'm very happy to share some of my initial readings of her work with you today. Studies in the natural sciences, early experience in the humanities, a mentorship by Egyptian artist Mr. Farouk established Shakir's progressive, outspoken, intellectual, creative perspective expressed through the making of objects and writing. During formal art studies in Paris between 1948 and 51, experimentation with geometric abstraction through the fraction of space described by one critic as the paintings of a stone cutter were the, fo the focus of first exhibitions in the early 1950s. This period in Europe solidified her perspective that the origins of abstraction and modernity are located in Arab art and architecture, outlined in her seminal text, How Arabs Understood Pictor Pictorial Art, that she wrote in 1951, the year she returned to Beirut and began transitioning from painting to sculpture. Approaching her practice as civic project, Shakir produced housewares, textiles, furniture, jewelry, fabric, architecture, and landscape design. A long-term parallel commitment to sculpture resulted in a generative series of abstract modernist forms in stone, wood, bronze, aluminium, brass, and plexiglass. These, the artist stated, were to be produ produced large in scale for individual and shared encounters in public space. Exploring repetition and modularity in the construction of form, the structures of mathematics, science, Islamic art and architecture, Arabic script and poetry are employed to open a philosophical inquiry inspired by Sufi thought on the potential infiniteness of self and citizenry. Possibilities of multipleness or multiplicity and infiniteness or capacity and growth can be identified in the formal and intellectual references of movement and progress that reappear throughout her practice. The line and circle of the mosque, the modular tessellating forms of modernist architecture, the written Arabic script, and the structural movement of poetic verse, and quantum physics, cellular construction, and scientific progression towards the understanding of DNA. These inquiries feed into and from one another, repeatedly reordered by the artist as a set of equations in her work, as her understanding of science, humanities, and her own practice developed within the shifting context of Beirut's socio-political processes of secularization, civil war, and post-conflict rebuilding. The large-scale sculpture's poem from 63, Bench, uh, which you see here in Doha, from 69, and Memory of the Arches from 1980, di directly respond to this notion of civic responsibility. The early gouache paintings that we saw in the slides before from the 50s and maquettes and sculptures from the fluid metamorphic series Interform, Jewel, and Module from the 1970s are independent objects made with mathematical precision that hold the potentiality for singular and multiple forms as active propositions for murals and large sculptures. The latter drawing on scientific notions of division and re-cohesion just as much as they refer to modular tendencies in architecture. These tactile forms offer a rhythmic experience of form, language, and thought that were to open a gateway towards transcendence of consciousness, to deepen the individual capacity for self-reflection in the world. Her works in, this, in her works, this potentiality of the self refers to the individual and the collective as physical beings and politically minded bodies, and opens a place to engage with the binding of a progressive social society of limitless trajectory. The forms are made 
as structures that support variations of experiential, metaphysical, and phenomenological use, being with the artwork, holding it in one's hands, moving around it and feeling its presence, are all possibilities of the object's transmission as something that augments or influences the understanding of our potential self. Line without line, color without color, is taken from one of the artist's handwritten notes that was written at an unknown date uh, that we composite after 1962, the date printed on the flyer of her own exhibition at UNESCO that she used as a notepad in this case. And it reads, line without line, color without color, to move with the color, make a line without colors, and a sculpture without drawing the lines. This statement conceptualizes an anti-formalist strategy that produces objects or artworks of pragmatic systems that are built using particles or cells that join two things together to make a whole as an embodiment of growth and enlargement. It proposes the possibility of making something, an object, with an outcome that is an experience, removed from or going beyond the things that it is physically comprised. She defines an almost invisible, close web of reliance between material construction, philosophical ingredients of conceptualization that are applicable to her use and reading of form, materials, concept, and experience. Architectural fundamentals that chime with an intention for a structure not just to be seen, but experienced. Shakir's exchanges with architecture in the region and internationally were wide and varied. Living in Iraq in the 1930s with her family, travels to Cairo in Egypt in the 43 and to Morocco in the 80s, formed important connections to iconic architecture of these geographies that are fed into her works, for example, in Movement of the Arch from the 1980s. Architects such as Hatham Fathi, Rifat Chadri, Buckminster Fuller and Lokivizia, whose Cité Radius she visited in 1949, were all important references in her connecting wider industrial relationships to earlier notions of Arab modernism. In her making of public sculptures, designs for public gardens, extensive writings, lectures and letters, as well as a lifelong production of furniture, objects and textiles for her family's use, she staked a claim in celebrating the individual within the universal, the one and the many. The physicality of making and the materials of basic wood, stone, and brass stood for egalitarianism and equality. The objects held left-leaning sentiments that move far beyond literal visual representations of collective identity po politics. Placing the work in public makes it susceptible to external influences. It becomes a living organ in the ecosystem of the natural organic world. In these forms, the physical and metaphorical positive and negative of space and energy synergize in the exchange with the, with the human form. The simple movement of a hand across, a cold, across smooth, cold limestone, or the flexing and softening of the back finding its support against the hard, curved, tessellating bench on which she has invited it to rest. This tactile intentionality continues to fill my curiosity. Reflecting on Shakir's marrying of science, enlargement, extension, read through the origins of these forms in, in Arabic and Islamic culture, we reach the idea of the essence of self. In a note from Shakir's archive dated again post-1962, we see a summary of her communication of the capacity of the work in triggering something, something I would call the intended experience. And she qu I quote her, when the mind shifts, the body has to follow. The process of transcending or going beyond detaches the mind from its fixed level and allows it to exist, if only for a moment, without any level at all. It simply experiences silence devoid of thought, emotions, wishes, fears, or anything at all. Afterwards, when the mind returns to its usual level of consciousness, it has acquired a little freedom to move. As an artist, architect, social and political activist, intellectual ecologist, and a feminist, Shakir's radical perspective saw the present moment as an eternal proposition to progress and achieve something beyond. As she believed, and she believed this was possible and actively willed it to take place in the city of Beirut, a city in which the order of things was eternally eclipsed in an embattled exchange between tradition and progress, fluidity and control. This line of thinking starts to articulate Shakir's practice within the wider Middle Eastern region as one strand of an international modernism defined by complex relationships and connections to colonial histories and post-independence movements, while constantly and most importantly in dialogue with expanded global modernist thinking. Thank you.